Hiko, an official retired CSGO pro player now entering Valorant with 100 Thieves. I know we've already talked about that a couple of times, but he's also brought up a lot of great points recently in his 100 Thieves podcast, an interview which will be linked down below for all of you guys. And I do think as of right now, when it comes time for a captain, he will be the builder of this team for 100 Thieves. I am super curious who exactly he will actually pick and choose for that. A quick fun fact, I think he is probably one of the bigger minds and probably as of right now, one of the more established IGLs in that scene. So I do trust his opinion fun fact being his top three players also revealed in this podcast currently in valorant one is swag otherwise known as brax also from csgo one is tens also from counter-strike global offensive in his history and now officially with valorant with the cloud nine roster and number three was actually ace if you guys know the nrg family he also has a counter-strike background most recently also coming from the apex scene those are his top three players as of right now but the main topic for this video he does share his two cents on the gap when valorant first came out out for beta and now official release the gap between csgo pro players and other esports pros transitioning to valorant was a pretty big one as we probably a lot of us did expect hiko says that gap is now immensely shrunk but he does curiously state and again i think he is one of the the better minds out there he curiously does say though when it comes time for making the transition fortnite pros have had it the hardest so i'm, I'm gonna stop there for now and i want to ask you what what is the valorant player pool looking like right now you know it's like i think the biggest shock that people saw they knew that csgo players were going to come and play valorant right so you have a bunch of different players coming over from overwatch some from fortnite csgo what do you think the skill set looks like right now in terms of experience and mechanical skill and just the overall the the, the top of the echelon the up of the up who's the best right now <clears throat> Well, I think it's interesting if you actually think about it and look at it from a high level. Um, uh, we'll say even a few weeks ago, the CSGO guys were way ahead. Like, it wasn't even really a, a, a competition. Mechanics and these strategies and these tactics that we're thinking of and the way we think is so much different than, you know, an Overwatch player or a PUBG player or a Fortnite player. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually go as far as saying that within the last three weeks or even month, a lot of these players have caught up. A lot of them have, they're, they're not as sharp mechanically and they're not as sharp mentally as, uh, you know, the CS players. I think that's something that will just come with time. But I think as far as like pure aim goes and, and game sense and ability usage, I think everyone's kind of catching up. A Counter-Strike player will know and is always constantly thinking about that. Maybe, you know, a Fortnite player, you know, Ninja's out here building houses and you know trying to make oh, sure <laughs> he's trying to make sure he doesn't die meanwhile you know that's not even a thing in my mind like i'm always thinking about the next move i'm always thinking about where positionally on the map people are where we should be what we should be mm. doing and i think it's just that little difference right there goes a long way but it's not it's not as the, the gap is not as big as it was for sure all right let me ask you okay. this which <clears throat> community that's transitioned over to the game has been the worst that's taken the, the longest to catch on fortnite <laughs> yeah, <he goes. laughs> I, I think i don't no, I'm just I, kidding yeah i mean it's a completely different game it's like third person you got to build i get it but yeah okay Right. So as we continue to see plenty of Counter-Strike pros and some Overwatch pros and Apex pros and Fortnite pros make the move, will that gap ever shrink all the more? I think it's, you know, obviously that's probably where the curve does lead, but how how long is it before that curve is finally it, it, it put up? How long do we see Overwatch pros and Apex pros being at the very tippity top with all of these Counter-Strike guys? I have no idea, but as of right now, I think it's a pretty fair blanket statement besides a few here and there. You know, Ace is definitely going to be somewhere. We got Sinatra. He's already somewhere. Besides a couple movements, we've already seen a lot of the top rosters so far. When you look towards TSM or a Gen G or a T1, they have all chosen former Counter-Strike pros. When will we see a team out there, you know, choose a majority, if not just maybe two uh, or a majority of non-Counter-Strike pros to join their roster? That's where things are going to get very, very fun to watch. Thank you, Hiko, for his two cents. That podcast will be linked down below, and I will certainly keep on sharing with all of you guys as we slowly approach whatever comes next for Valorant. 
And again, if you guys did miss it, the first big event, actually, it wasn't really the first big event. It was the first, I would say, official event, the Twitch launch event that was supposed to happen on the day of release. It was actually delayed an entire day, and that did also uh, come down to TSM versus T1 as well, which is pretty cool. T1 did take that. And speak of the devil, when it comes time for Hiko saying Brax is the number one current Valorant player in terms of the skill he is capable of actually showing, that was his biggest win ever since 2018 in Counter-Strike. So it's very cool to see T1, TSM already at the top who will join them next at the top i'm sure we'll be breaking it down here until next time take care drink your water drink your coffee okay bye